and it's 519 and workers are still out here. They certainly are drawing crowds of all ages trying to get a look and check out the progress. Getting into a storage unit like this one is near impossible in Central Oregon because facilities are 95% full. This pipe is at least 50 years old. What you can't see on the inside is an eight and a half foot long crack. Police arrived here last night to find one man dead and another in need of medical help. Neighbors say a father shot his son. Public parks, parking lots, and Wall Street. But it could be expanding soon, covering a lot more area. Before Truffle can go out in the field, she has to be trained with this. It's a human leg bone. Most of us are using water like there's nothing to worry about. Or is there? The average person. You know, there's plenty of water. Uses 100 gallons of water. You know, it's like I got all the water I need. A day. More than I need. It might seem that way, but Central Oregon is in a severe drought. It does surprise me. Looking south, one has to wonder if California's problems will soon be ours. We're not at the level of California, but this year um, is definitely uh, much drier snowpack and much drier climate than years past. Let's drift back through time. The United States drought monitor shows we haven't seen a drought like this in 10 years. I mean, climate change is happening and climate change is real. The water levels in our rivers are rapidly declining. And we're not seeing the rapids we're used to because the mountains have 90% less snow. Repercussions could trickle from the stream to your sink. Did you know that a full load of laundry uses 60 gallons of water? What about a dishwasher? A normal load uses 15 gallons. Think you want to save some water by doing your dishes by hand? Think again. That can use up to 30 gallons. But the city of Bend says it would take several years of this weather to cause restrictions of this precious resource. We're going to continue to have dry, drier, warmer winters. An issue bigger than your daily shower. If you wait to save, you might be left out to dry. This means there are no rules or regulations. There's no database to help you find a good border. But there are great borders here in Central Oregon. The trick is just to find them for yourself. In Central Oregon, we take our dogs with us everywhere. Everywhere. They're more than just furry friends. When you get a dog that's as loving and sweet and gentle as Lucy is, they become your best friend. We think about them while we're at work. All the time, like I look forward to coming home with her every day. But where does Fido go when you leave the high desert? We have boarded her in the past. It's like dropping your kid off at sleepaway camp. Except this one barely has any rules to ensure your dog's health. You just never really quite wor stop worrying about your dog. Yeah, this is our baby copper, huh? This is my boy. Owner of Wag Bend, Justin Croson, has been in the dog boarding and daycare business for five years. Here's one dog. This is Sandy staying the night here. At Wag Bend, the pups play free, but that's not a requirement. It's very bare of minimals, but certain kennels do operate that way. There is just one state regulation related to the health of your dog, and that's that he or she must get one hour of exercise each day. There's no real regulations, so to speak, um, other than I guess you have a personal responsibility that you feel towards somebody's animal. As far as the city and county go, there are a few zoning provisions that are based on complaints from the public. It's not as if we're circling the neighborhood with code enforcement staff trying to find kennels. And there are no scheduled or unannounced inspections. A lot of life comes down to in general, are you comfortable with somebody or are you not? There are ways to help you figure that out because there are trustworthy kennels in Central Oregon. First things first, ask your vet for a recommendation. Then ask questions. Where do they stay at night? Can I look at that? It should be yes. Once you're back there, sniff out the red flags. Take note of whether it's clean and a comfortable temperature. Then ask how they keep track of meds and food and know the worker to dog ratio. 
from ASPCA is 10 to 15 dogs per person. Ultimately, you have to be the watchdog. You should be able to drop in on a facility at any given time and look at it. So when you do come home, you'll come home to a wagging tail. Yeah, she's definitely like a kid of mine. <laughs> With your best bud by your side. She is truly my best friend. Just a big woof and there was dust everywhere. This employee didn't want us to show his face. He's worked at Wood Grain Millwork for almost 20 years and he hopes to continue. I kind of dove underneath this metal table. I didn't know what was going on. The mill's general manager says snow and ice caused the break. So I knew it fell where there was going to be people uh, working at their stations. The snow on the roof also froze the ripsaw below, disabling it. So we cut up all the wood that we had and then we went and started cleaning up different places. That's when it happened, fast and with little warning. Well, I heard the um, ceiling cracking. So if those saws were working, would you have been right under it? Yes. Employees say the roof has been leaky for years. I checked with OSHA, the federal agency that monitors workplace safety. Now, they haven't received any complaints because of it. However, I did find in the past eight years, the mill has had 20 violations, 10 of which are labeled serious. And hopefully it's, uh, we'll be back to work soon. The general manager says it could be weeks before they patch up the hole. Repair what they need to repair. And but all 300 employees made it out alive. I imagine there's a lot of people feeling lucky today. In Prineville, Katie Higgins, News Channel 21. One block from downtown Bend, the sights. Well, it's a very fat and very fluffy owl baby. And sounds. They have kind of a of two great horned owls and their owlets are drawing crowds. Oh, it was right over in here. Wildlife photographer Norm Williams got up close and personal with one. One of the little guys was on the ground. He called ODFW and snapped some pictures. He'd sit there and he'd clack his little beak. Da, 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 da. Owls nest in uh, precarious places. And it's fledging season. They don't quite have their balance. They're tired of staying in the nest. They walk out on a branch. They're going everywhere. They flap their wings and fall. Not as graceful as you might have pictured a first flight. Their nickname is Tiger of the Air. But completely normal for this stage in development. The problem, their nests are in public places like Drake Park. They're adapting to the hustle and bustle. High Desert Wildlife Rescue and Rehabilitation has five great horned outlets right now. They've rescued nine this year alone. We were shot. Usually, they get one to three. If you find one, call professionals. I, I don't think I can go out and catch mice as good as his parents can. <laughs> they might look cute, but they're still wild animals. Ooh.